All right, thanks, everyone. Um, so, yeah, I'm from uh, BBC News Labs. We're a multidisciplinary innovation team within BBC R&D. Uh, we work on prototypes uh, of new audience experiences, similar to the one I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, we work on solutions to help journalists automate things, that kind of thing. And we do research and generally try things out. Uh, we've got a website, bbcnewslabs.co.uk. We're on um, that thing called Twitter. And uh, we've got a mastodon on uh, social.bbc. Um, we're on there as well. Um, so the problem uh, we started with. Uh, so imagine you're watching the news channel live on iPlayer. You can rewind back the last two hours. Anything that was, was in the last two hours, you can rewind back to. Um, but how do you find that important moment? Um, do you rewind 20 seconds at a time trying to find something that, that you're looking for? Do you drag the scr scrub bar back and forth? Um, do you, you know, start from the beginning and sort of work your way forward? Um, how would you even know that there's something to look for? Uh, that was the problem we were working with, and the idea we came up with was putting highlight markers uh, on, that, on that scrub bar. So what if we surface markers to all the key moments within the last two hours? So you can quickly go back to uh, navigate to those important moments and, know, and importantly know that they're there. Um, so this, this delivers a, a news need. So we work on these prototypes alongside journalists and try and deliver value that they have in mind for what they want to give to audiences. And this is Johnny. He's um, the streaming editor in BBC News. Um, he said that bringing audiences directly to key moments in our live video and audio news coverage would be utterly transformational. So he was really excited about this project um, before we started it. Um, so what we started to look at initially was um, this, is, this is the thing called the SMP player internally, which is the, the BBC's media player on the web. So the thing that, uh, the, the, drives, the player that drives BBC iPlayer on web and, uh, and sounds. Uh, and there's an API for it that we can sort of uh, hack on and, and try, try new things with. Um, and it provides support for, um, for something called chapters and something called highlights. So chapters are structural blocks, like the, one, the ones shown here. So you could decorate the timeline with these structural chapters of the structure of the program um, so that people can navigate using those, a bit like DVD chapters. Um, and they're usually sort of, uh, they're blocky and they're usually sort of contiguous, so like just uh, one after the other. And then there's uh, another thing it supports uh, called highlights or moments. So these are momentary, they're just a, a thing that happened at a particular place. Um, and you can just drop those anywhere. They don't have to be structural in, in any way. Um, so we started um, doing a pr proof of concept. So just taking that player, using uh, the, the JavaScript API it provides in the web that allows you to just control and, and throw things into that, uh, into that player, onto the, decorate the, the timeline there with, uh, with these fake markers just to, just to do a, a proof of concept. And you know, we can like, yep, OK, the player supports this. We can do this. Uh, if we have the, the highlights somewhere to fetch them from, uh, we could do this. Um, so the very, very early proof of concept sort of structure would look something like this. So uh, we do a lot of stuff in AWS. I gave a talk about all the tooling we used last year. Um, so we, um, from that web app, we thought, well, we could have um, the web app going uh, with the player on, going fetch some highlights um, from a database. So they, I think they're going to be in a database. We'll go and fetch them from there um, via uh, an AWS Lambda um, API. Uh, that will go and fetch them from the database and give them to the web app. And then likewise, we could have, sort of, have CRUD operations, so being able to create and manage those highlights from, that, uh, from a web form on that page, so just a static page. So the, the tech stack uh, initially sort of looked something like this. So we'd have this uh, Lambda API uh, with, uh, implemented in fact with Fast API using SQL Alchemy to talk to our SQL database, which is a, a serverless instance uh, of uh, Postgres on Aurora. And we just have this static HTML page with a bit of JavaScript going off and fetching those highlights from the, uh, from the uh, database via the API. Um, so with just, you know, just a few days of sort of hacking around with things, we had uh, the very early proof of concept of you know, we can store them, we can have a, have a management system for creating them, and you can see what they would look like to the audience uh, within that same interface. Um, so we had this going really, really early and, and just a, a nice, easy thing to get started with. Um, I'm talking about pretty much just, uh, in fact, I started this um, at PyCon UK last year, sort of on the train here and, uh, and on the train back and bits in between. So we kind of got to an early stage like this within uh, the first week or two of the project. 
uh, we started looking at what the minimum viable product would be for this. So um, we sort of thought, well, we don't want to just cover the news channel, so we could have a drop down to s allow you to select TV and radio services, all, all the different ones that, we, uh, the, that are available. Um, and also, we needed to support um, the live streams, which are kind of a different technology internally. Um, so the, the streams that go out that cover a specific news event that are kind of going on, um, that are separate from what's going on the broadcast uh, terrestrial channels. Um, so we added support for those as well. And um, we, this SMP, the player that I was talking about, that, um, that supports a plug-in ecos ecosystem. So you can develop a new functionality and provide that as a plug-in so that when it's being hosted on the real web page, it's using your additional functionality. Um, so in this case, we wanted to make a plugin that would go and fetch the highlights in the, in the way that the, the basic web app did and, uh, and be able to show those to the audiences uh, within the page. Uh, we also needed um, a data publishing pipeline. So instead of uh, all the clients going off and fetching, you know, reaching out to our API, we wanted to have just a static asset, so a JSON file containing all the highlights for a particular stream or a service. Um, and we would just keep rewriting that JSON file as, as the highlights changed by the uh, uh, editors in the, the management system. Um, we also wanted to be able to preserve highlights that were created um, on live TV so that they could be used on demand. So if a, a highlight is added during an episode of Newsnight at, say, quarter past 10, um, we would then you know, go and look at what what, look at the schedule, calculate what the offset of where that would be once that program goes to uh, on demand so people can watch it, uh, watch it later and have those highlights show up at the same point. Um, so that was our, our kind of idea, and so uh, it, we um, added a few components here. So we've still got our database and AWA, uh, API Lambda. Uh, we added authentication for that uh, using JWT. So our web app uh, authenticates and can do the, uh, as I say, the CRUD operations. So you can manage all your highlights through from the web app uh, securely and uh, all logged against uh, your, your user details. Uh, we added the, a couple of Lambda functions for um, retrieving the episode information from the scheduling API, and uh, one to handle the publishing and updating the publish, published JSON files. Uh, we published those to an S3 bucket, which we later added a, um, a CDN sort of infrastructure to so that uh, the client could go and fetch the, uh, both the plugin, which we, we, we needed to write as well, um, the, the, the SMP plugin, and all of the JSON data for the particular stream that that player was uh, asking for highlights for. Uh, so the plugin, uh, this is, as I say, the standard way of uh, adding functionality to, to the media player in, in BBC's, uh, in, in, in iPlayer and Sounds on the web. Um, you can write these in, in JavaScript and obviously TypeScript as well. We also decided to create a, a Chrome extension so that uh, BBC staff could enable this plugin uh, without it being live audience facing. And this is just a really easy way for us to uh, be able to enable that so they could see what audiences would see if this prototype was to go live uh, and a, a simulation of what audience was, w audiences would see and how it would behave. And we were now at this point, uh, sort of the end of the short uh, few weeks of the project cycle we'd just done. Um, we, was, we were able to demonstrate this kind of working end to end as a proof of concept. And uh, we got lots of interest. So people in BBC Sport, and uh, Five Live, and World Service News, Prime Minister's Questions, and uh, the news team that runs these uh, live pages covering uh, big events. They were all really interested in this and thought it would be a great way, as Johnny showed in the beginning, that this would be transformational for the way that they could interact with audiences and find um, and get them to find the, the things that, that were important uh, really quickly. Um, and so the first very live, uh, the, the very first live trial of this was just a single marker on, um, on the BBC Two stream uh, at the beginning of Prime Minister's Questions. So they, they do this thing where they're in the studio, they're, they're finishing off the politics show, and it goes into the House of Commons as soon as they're, they're ready to start um, PMQs. So they just dropped a marker on to say, you know, to indicate that that's, that's the point at which uh, PMQs begins. And so that day, anyone who came to this, uh, this stream uh, would, would have been able to see that marker if they'd come in late and go back to the beginning of it. Um, and that was it, just, just a really simple trial, um, but it was, it was really great for us to see that go out um, live and audiences uh, be able to, to use that. And then uh, we, did a, we did a few more demos and kind of got the word around, and before you know it, we 
were presented with um, some mock-ups of what it might look like if we use this on Eurovision. And they were saying, well, we, we'd like to use this and we'd like to be able to mark up uh, where all the acts are so people can navigate around and find uh, all the, you know, go back and watch the acts if they come in late or if they want to rewatch one um, and be able to navigate through the, the program that way. And, you know, it's usually the opposite. People aren't usually coming to us and, you know, with designs of what, you know, what they want to see from us. It's usually us trying to pitch things to them. So this was a great way for us to uh, collaborate with them and try and deliver something uh, that, that everybody would, would make the most out of. And uh, so at this point, we didn't have these, you know, they've, they've added I, the, con the concept of icons and, and graphics to this, which we didn't have previously. So there's a few conversations we had about what we, what we might do and what we'd be able to add in. And a lot of this was um, sort of on the front end. So my team does a lot of uh, projects in React. And um, so it, um, to, in order to make this l not look like a thing that I'd thrown together on the train in about five minutes, um, we, we had a sort of proper React code base built and uh, using all these proper BBC React components that, uh, that are used across BBC websites. Um, so same sort of functionality, and we added, uh, we added some new functionality to this. So this concept of an icon picker, so you can, design, um, you can determine a, an icon to be shown alongside your, your highlight. Um, and we added lots of other features that the journalists that you, were using this wanted to see. So they wanted to have editorial oversight. So we, uh, we added statuses, so uh, you could have a uh, highlight could be marked as draft and not published. And, uh, you could delete them and it would pre preserve it in the database and you'd have this audit log so that uh, all, of the, all of the actions on creating and editing and uh, deleting highlights would be logged in, in, the, uh, in the audit log so that they could just have uh, everything covered uh, editorially. Um, they did use this, use this on the Eurovision semi-finals, but just on the news as coverage of it. So it wasn't quite what we were um, looking at in the beginning with the country flags, but they just used it to mark up important things throughout the, uh, throughout the stream, so when the results were particularly, that kind of thing. Um, so it was just a few, like, sort of teasing out this, this idea of what we might use it for. And then uh, Spring Watch, which is a um, um, nature show every, that goes on every year where they, they have these really long streams that run all day. Um, and, you know, there's 12 hours of footage of birds and, and not a lot happening for most of the time. So they use that to, um, um, they use that to mark all the really interesting moments of, uh, like, what's this one? Uh, Canada goose visits oyster catcher. I couldn't see that very well. Uh, so so all, those, all those key moments that they identif and identified uh, were marked up like that. Um, we, throughout this, we did a lot of um, audience feedback and um, uh, we gathered feedback from, from people who use this and throughout all, all of the, all the experiments we did, and this one in particular, we generally got the sense that uh, people liked the feature, they, they found that it Im improved their viewing experience, they wanted to see it more on more different types of content, uh, they found it easy to use and that kind of thing. Uh, the only thing it dipped on was that highlights weren't added for all the interesting moments, that, all the moments they were interested in. So it was just a case of, you know, we want to see this rolled out more and used more and being more, more useful. Um, so that was interesting. And um, the, next, uh, the next big project this was used on was uh, Wimbledon. So this was actually a kind of a very different approach. So that rather than people going in and manually creating moments uh, in, the, in the web app, this was data driven, so we get sports data coming through for lots of sports, and you know it's it's it's, it's just so much data. So we filtered that down to you know not just every not every single point, but you know the match points, the um, um, the beginning of the match, the you know uh, the end of the, the end of the uh, the beginning of new sets and all that kind of thing. So we filtered it down, uh, created them automated drafts of all of those um, those particular filtered down events. Uh, to create draft markers for them all, and then there was just somebody in the studio just checking them and marking them and, and making sure that they went out okay uh, before they published them. Um, so that was really cool and a really good way to experiment. Um, and then uh, the iPlayer team actually took this um, and implemented it in a, in a different way, in a different, different, using different visuals. So without using our plugin, they, they implemented this directly into the iPlayer product, um, but going from fetching the data generated by uh, the, the tool, and uh, they were there. They had people who were marking up the where all the acts started, a bit like we said with Eurovision. Um, so this was just a, an A/B test. So some people in the audience would have seen this, some people wouldn't. Um, 
and they kind of used that as as chapter markers at the beginning of each act. So uh, that was a way for them to just help people navigate through the content if they wanted to skip an, art an artist or go and find an artist they were, they were interested in, instead of scrubbing around the bar, trying to find the bit they're looking for. Um, and as I say, that was web only as well. And then uh, just last weekend, um, there was a, an event called Radio 2 in the Park, and the iPlayer team actually built this into their TV app. So this is a real big um, step forward as well. So we had these markers showing, they kind of, again, they designed them differently. We wanted them to look like, um, uh, like blocks that you could you know, easily navigate through on your TV remote. So again, all of the acts were marked up like that in our web app through our data publishing pipeline and then picked up uh, by the iPlayer TV app. Uh, so that was really cool as well. And um, so I, I didn't really cover a lot of um, technical detail in this about the, um, the things that we use, but uh, there's, I gave a talk here last year on all the kind of technology we, we use to build stuff like this and do our rapid prototyping. Uh, so uh, do check that talk out if you're, uh, if you're interested in learning more. Um, and just to um, finish, uh, so we're, we're going to be hiring soon. We're going to have a, a software engineering role opening up soon. So do check out the, uh, the BBC Careers website and uh, our website, the News Lab site, and uh, our social media platforms as well. Um, so I think I've finished in plenty of time for um, any questions. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, there's, there's lots of teams in R&D that have uh, worked on that kind of concept before of creating the metadata, using, often using ML, uh, ML to um, analyze and look for those, those key moments or those interesting moments. There's, there's some really interesting work going on in, in R&D that, that does that, and it's one of the things that yeah, we've, we've, we've talked about doing. Yeah. Uh, for, for the news events and things like that, it's generally an editorial decision. So. Um, I think we would generally steer clear of automating that stuff and just saying there's a service that does that with ML and it's magic and we don't look at it. It would always, <laughs> especially for news, it would always be, um, you know, edit, have editorial oversight and that, that would be a real key, um, key thing for, especially for news. Uh, is the iPlayer web app based on open source or is it open source and can anybody use the plugins that you've developed for this? Um, so I'd, I'd say... Without knowing too much about it, I'd say generally not. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not really all that familiar. There's, there is a lot of open source stuff on uh, BBC's GitHub. Um, some of it's part of iPlayer components, and, and some of the um, some of the technology used is you know re reusable elsewhere. And uh, if it's kind of specific to BBC business, it's it's generally best sort of kept internal. But uh, there's plenty of stuff that's um, community you know led and. and uh, could be could be used elsewhere. So we do open source things when it makes sense. Hello. Uh, yep. How long did it take to go from MVP to rolling it out? To to what? Sorry. To rolling it out onto the web. So I didn't I didn't catch the word. Um, how long did it take to go from your MVP to rolling it out on the web and iPad? So um, we sort of got the MVP working in the first project cycle, which would have been eight weeks total, um, and had the, you know, the, basic, the basic version working um, that was, uh, it was probably another cycle. We were kind of doing something else along, along the side. We did a project on, um, but the, half the project was based around clipping out those, part, those highlight points as well. So there's a lot of stuff where we're like doing weird stuff with FFmpeg to, you know, so there was, there was sort of two projects going on at once. Uh, so I'd say over the, we did, the whole MVP to the point where it was um, the highlights and the clipping tool were at um, a good enough stage to be used uh, in those early trials uh, after two, two cycles, so two lots of eight, eight week um, cycles. And then um, sort of over, you know, we did other projects and moved on to other things and kept it ticking along and tried to promote it internally. Um, and then iPlayer picked it up and over. So as I say, it started exactly a year ago 
two project cycles, um, and then basically the rest of the year has been bits and pieces here and there, and people trying it out in new trials, and um, then iPlayer picking up and integrating it themselves uh, in the course of a year. I have a question for me. Yeah. So, I mean, as I say, we, this isn't an everyday thing yet. Uh, it's not, it's not, they're not using it for everything. Um, it, we've only used it in trials, really. Um, uh, we, are collect, we do have data on you know, how many clicks the markers have had. and, and what, We're trying to actually look, uh, ascertain, um, the, ob observe different behaviors. So are people scrub, using the scrub bar less? Are they manually moving around the scrub bar less because they're using these these things and, and stuff like that, and, um, and asking them what, you know, there's a feedback form you can open up when you've got the highlights that you can tell us what you, you think about it and answer a few questions. So, yeah, we do have lots of stuff like that, but I, I don't have it to hand, yeah. Um, would there be any plans to retrospectively add these to the backlog of BBC content? Yeah, yeah, it's a really, really good point. Um, we we would like to we would like to um, first of all this, as I said, we're we're just publishing to JSON files at the moment that are just kind of lost to the void. They're useful for this sort of this loop of getting it, this thing working, but the the BBC is losing the metadata in that we're not saving it in the proper systems and things. So uh, there's all sorts of places we could say we could send this and, and attach it to things, and it would end up so in the archives in ten years time. You know, half half an hour into this thing, there's a highlight where this thing happened, uh, and that's related to these elements and the, you know this person and this celebrity and this politician, um, and have a proper you know graph of all of that data. Uh, so it, it's that's kind of where we're trying to get to, um, but the BBC is constantly reinventing these metadata systems and uh, you know all that kind of thing. So we're trying to find the right way to to get it in there and um, preserve it so that it can be most yeah used used uh, most efficiently, uh, effectively. Hi, uh, it's fascinating stuff. I mean, can't imagine how cool it must be to knock up a prototype on trial and then <laughs> see it up on the TV, um, not long after that, that's awesome. But, uh, you're like r and so at some point this stops being r and it becomes someone else's responsibility. How, how does that work? Do you have to go to another team? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, my colleagues are all chuckling at the back there. Um, so, in theory, we would have a, uh, a method of transfer, so we would have an, uh, you know, a pipeline of, we, we make an idea, we pro prove, prove something, we reach some set goals that need, you know, want to be met and do some research, whatever, and somebody it has somewhere to go and somewhere to take it. Um, so, I mean, some of the stuff in R&D is not like that, some of, the, some, of the, some of it is we're thinking about what the future will be, you know, 10 years time, what we, you know, we'll do some papers on what that might be. Um, we're on the sort of closer end to trying to get things pr prototyped and pro proven now. Um, the BBC is heavily understaffed and underfunded, and uh, it's difficult to get product teams who are maintaining things and keeping iPlayer running day to day to take these new things on. So, uh, yeah, uh, ideally we, we would and we will, but we and we're, and we're trying to we're trying to get there. Yeah. Um, yeah. With this metadata, do, do you think conceivably you could produce different versions of the same program, so that you could be able to be yeah. able to a condensed version? Or... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've done lots of research in that area. Um, so segmenting up uh, programs and rebuilding new playlists out of you know here are all the interviews of you know the bits that you're interested in and building up personalized playlists of content. It's uh, there's lots of really interesting research in that area and. This kind of thing can help make that happen. So I did an early, when I when I first started there um, a few years ago, I did a project researching that, but it was sort of assuming this data existed. Um, and so now we're getting to the point where we might we've got a few tools in the in the you know that we've been working on that will help generate that metadata and, and make it easier to uh, you know provide an ML algorithm which will decide what your playlist will be or something and build recommendation systems around that. So yeah, we're getting there. Thanks.